Hello there, Nature Hacker back, and I am going to make another video on rockets in space. So I've made two videos before, um, talking about rocket nozzles and um, Newton's third law, the misinterpretation that NASA uses and other lemming scientists use um, to explain that somehow they think mass times velocity equals a force because they never graduated high school physics and um, what else do they say mass times velocity uh oh and then the misinterpretation of Newton's third law that whenever you try to create a force you're gonna get an equal and opposite reactionary force which is totally false and the real translation of Newton's third law is that in order to create a force you need something outside the system to sustain, that can sustain a reactionary force. So that was my last video and then talking about how rocket nozzles, how the increasing the higher your altitude becomes the larger the nozzle needs to be and taking that to a logical extreme in space your rocket nozzle needs to be infinitely large in order to generate thrust. So that all I believe thoroughly disproves rockets in space. However, if you look online, if you just Google rockets don't work in space, there's a big forum post on Clues, what is it? Clues forum or something. And the guy there focuses mostly on Jewel Jewel Thompson, I believe, free expansion. And I believe, you know, it's a very important topic and definitely worthwhile to, you know, make a video and discuss free expansion and how that relates to rockets not being able to work in space. So, in my last videos, I basically gave NASA the benefit of the doubt and said, hey, look, we, we will, let's just say that you're right and that all the mass inside of your rocket is being thrown out and that throwing out of that mass is making the rocket go forward even if that were the case I mean there's nowhere near enough mass in that um, rocket to get it to the moon I mean like I'm thinking me myself to get myself to the moon I'm gonna have to throw like mountains worth of mass and obviously NASA's rocket doesn't have a mountain worth of mass in it and they would use the mass times velocity equation but mass times velocity is not a force so that is just a totally fake equation. You cannot use mass times velocity equals force because it's not true. So I gave NASA the benefit of the doubt and still disproved them in my last video. But in this video we're not going to give NASA the benefit of the doubt. In this video we're going to show that hey you can't use a gas as a ballast to throw out the back of a rocket in space. It just cannot work. Sure you can throw off parts of your rocket. You can get people there and set TNT charges you know on a bunch of pieces of mass in your rocket and blow off chunks of your rocket in space and obviously you're not going to go more than like 20 feet from blowing off chunks of your rocket. All right, But you could do that. You know, you know or just have you have a ton of guns on your on your uh, ship and you're just shooting guns out towards earth and just <laughs> propelling yourself with the recoil from the guns. Yeah, you know, you could do that. The reason you can shoot a gun and actually get movement in space is because the combustion chamber, the expansion chamber, is sealed. Sealed. 100% sealed. Read my lips on that one. Okay. If gas is not contained when it expands in space, it cannot produce work. The reason it can produce work in a gun in space is because the the combustion chamber is totally sealed and the gas is totally contained and the movement of the gas is totally converted into accelerating the bullet and the bullet is your ballast. The gas is not your ballast that you're shooting out. The bullet is your ballast, and that's what produces the recoil to make your rocket go one millimeter in space. All right, 
So, NASA says that it shoots gas out the back of its rocket and that, that propels it. Now, let's just say you drilled a hole in your gun in the, um, the combustion chamber. Do you think that that bullet is really going to go out when you combust the thing? No. The air is going to take the path of least resistance, and instead of blowing the bullet out, that's going to take a lot of work. Why not just escape through the hole, you know, and not have to produce any work? Does it produce any work? Does gas escaping through a hole produce any work? No. The gas has to be contained. I mean, do you have a hole in your piston, in your, in your, in your car, the, the engine piston? Do you have a hole there? No. Because you need the compression there to move the piston. The air isn't producing the work. The movement of the piston is producing the work. Gases don't produce work unless they're acting upon a solid body. And they can only act if it's pressurized. If there's no holes, if there's any holes, the gas will just escape without producing the work you want. Alright, so now NASA has their rockets, right? And they have their combustion chamber. Now, their combustion chamber has a hole in it. Obviously, because that's how it's going to shoot gas out the back, right? So they light the combustion chamber, and the gas expands and escapes out the back. Sounds a lot like the hole in the combustion chamber in the gun. Not going to produce any work, just escapes. There's nothing that the gas is pushing on. It's escaping into nothing. So I hope that that makes sense. I mean, I think I pretty thoroughly explained that. You know, gas has to be contained to produce work. There is no other option. Gas always has to be contained to produce work. Now, you can think of a balloon. You can give me a counterexample of a balloon. Well, let's say I blow up a balloon, and I blow it up as big, and then I let go, and it shoots around. You're like, well... The mass wasn't, the gas wasn't contained there, but it did work. Well, yeah, I mean, it did a small amount of work. Okay, you know, it's moving now a few grams of rubber around. Yeah, but the gas actually was contained. Relatively contained, okay? We're in an atmosphere, all right? We have actually pretty high PSI. What is the PSI here, like 15? I mean, the PSI in your car tires is like 30, and that's pretty high pressure. You know, we're in a decent high pressure air zone here. And that's why, have you noticed that me like breathing really huffing a lot? Not really. I mean, there's quite a lot of air here for gas exchange and stuff. So when you're letting gas flow out really fast, yeah, there is going to be a reactionary force because, yeah, that gas is contained. It is. I mean, if you think about it, the gas is contained because it's shooting into 15 psi air, and that 15 psi air is providing some friction, some resistance. Okay, a resistance against that blowing air coming out. So yeah, you're going to make a little bit of a force. Yeah, that air coming out of the combustion chamber, the hole in your gun's combustion chamber is going to produce a little teeny force. You know, that's. Air can push against air a little bit. You know, obviously not as much as a totally contained air. I mean, you go from from the kick of your gun shooting it, you know, almost hitting you in the face type force to if you have a hole in the expansion chamber, it's going to be like, you know. So it's very small comparatively. So, but in space, there's no relative containment on your airstream. You can shoot mass out the back, you can shoot gas out the back, because that's what they're shooting. You can shoot gas out the back as fast as you want, but there's no air pressure, there's no friction to be able to relatively contain that gas to actually push you forward. You're not, you can't, because you have to have that reactionary force. That gas coming out the back is only going to do work if it does work, and to for gas to do work has to be contained. 
you know, like I said, that's why you're, there's no holes in your uh, expand your combustion chamber in your gun. There's no holes in the piston chamber in your car engine because the gas has to be contained to do work. You know, and when you're shooting air out from that balloon, the gas is contained relatively because the friction of the air is producing a slight reactionary force that the balloon can propel off of. But in space, there is none of that. There's no piston to push on. There's no bullet to shoot out. It's just gas being shot into space. And there's no air pressure or anything else to produce a reactionary force. So Newton's third law is not in effect in that case. So that's a special case. I mean, gas is a special case. You can't throw a gas. You know, if I tried to throw some air, not going to work. You have to totally contain the gas. And as soon as you open up a hole in the bottom of your rocket to shoot gas out, it's no longer contained. It can no longer do work. And, you know, when you look deeper into Joule free expansion, I mean, you should definitely Google this, Joule free expansion. There's a good wiki article on it. It clearly states 